So exponential functions are different from what we've been talking about so far because of where the variable is located. Um, just for example, here's uh, 1, f of x equals 5.2, <coughs> and then raise that to the uh, 4x power. <coughs> so exponential functions are functions like this one where <coughs> we have the, the uh, variable, notice that is located in the uh, exponent. It's the name exponential functions, and that's different uh, than we've been so far talking about because the uh, powers we've had so far have just been numbers. But in this particular case, for exponential functions, the powers will be, uh, will contain the variable. Um, and, and so one thing they, they have us do is evaluate this. And so let, let's evaluate it for a couple of different values of x. Um, so evaluate this for yeah, x equals 2. Um, so f of 2. <coughs> so x is 2, so that would be 5.2 to the 8th power. And uh, yeah, so those, just put those in and see what we get. The, uh, Five hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred ninety-seven. Yeah, and that's one thing to note. Yeah, these since the variable has the exponent, um, a lot of a lot of times or on some of these values, they're going to get quite large. I mean, yes, we could have had with the others, but this is only to the eighth power, and that's we're talking five hundred thousand over five hundred thousand. So that's one of the things we'll talk about with the exponentials. How they get large quite fast, uh, or these particular ones. Now, the, uh, a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, what do we get if we've got x is zero here, or f of zero? Well, four times zero, so the uh, the zero power. And what uh, what value is always uh, anything to the zero power? Zero. Not zero, it's one, yeah. Anything to the zero power is one. And that will come up uh, a few times along the way here. So yeah, <clears throat> anything, anything to the zero power gives you a value of one. Um, now, let's also evaluate this for x equals uh, negative three, or something like that. <clears throat> Of course, you don't have to know this to evaluate this one, but um, so it'd be 5.2 to negative 12. Uh, is that going to give you a negative number? Why doesn't that give you a negative number? Because it's even on the exponent? Um, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you get. Well, mine says two, five, five, point, two point five five eight three four nine five one five. <clears throat> Put it all out here. This is what mine shows. And uh, yeah, this e for exponent, but it's also uh, noteworthy here. It's not. This to the negative nine power. It's uh, this is scientific notation, and some calculators show it differently. Um, this means times ten to the negative nine power, so it's really two point five five eight three four. Get all those in. Yeah, nine five one five um, times ten to the negative nine power. So that's one thing I was going to mention on that that's what your calculator shows. It's really scientific notation. But, and of course this means, 10 to the negative 9 power means if we wanted to change it to where it was in scientific notation, move that back nine places. So it is not a negative number. And anybody tell me, 
try again why uh, this isn't a negative number. What does a negative power really mean? A negative power means flip it over, right? So this really is 1 divided by 5.2 to the 12th power. And so you do not get a negative uh, number there because it's just 1 divided by a large number. But <clears throat> so that's why you get a small number here. It's a very small number. Yeah, so ones, ones like these uh, where we have a, a number, a base to a power, uh, just like that. You won't get any negative numbers. You'll get small positives, but you won't get any negatives like that. So just a couple of reminders there. And we can write it either way, right? Like it, any of those options? Like yeah, that's either one will be okay, yeah. As long as you know what it means. <coughs> All right, so let's start with, uh, next go to uh, look at what some graphs of these look like. Uh, graphs look like. So let's graph some, some basic ones here and then talk about shifting, shifting them too. But. So let's say we've got f of x equals 2 to the x. Well, go to our old uh, standby the table here. You can always talk about some values in the table. Um, and let's go with, let's start at x is negative 2 and then we'll work our way up to positive 2. And then maybe that'll show us, show us enough here to figure this out. All right, so if x is negative 2, we've got 2 to the negative 2. And it says you don't have to know that that means 1 over 2 squared, but it does explain why you get what you get. Uh, 0.25, right, is what you would have for the y value there. <coughs> to the negative 1, so that's going to be a half, 0.5. x is 0, so that's our 2 to the 0. Yeah, that's 1. <coughs> and then we get 2 to the 1, and then 2 squared. And let's add one more, two to the third. Uh, go up to three there. So we get eight. So yeah, we get this uh, graph right here. <clears throat> so at negative two, I'm at 0.25. At negative 1, I'm at 0.5. At 0, I'm at 1. 1, 2. 2, 4. And then 3, 8. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's hopefully obvious there that over on the right, as far as in behavior goes, um, those, those numbers are getting quite large, quite fast. Uh, the next one would be 16, right, if we went to the, the next integer anyway. Um, so yeah, that side there is, is definitely going up to infinity quite large, quite fast. Over here on the left end, though, what do you see happening there? Are those going to come below the x-axis anytime, or what's going to happen over here? It's going to level out, isn't it? Because of what we were just saying about the negative powers, right? The negative powers, you don't get a negative number there. They'll just flip over, and so you get small numbers or numbers close to zero. Yeah, so these are, just like you said there, they're going to level out. So what have we got, uh, what do we call that type of behavior on the end like that? Uh, asymptote? Horizontal asymptote? Yeah, we've got a horizontal asymptote here on the left side. Y equals zero. So it's uh, different from those, you know, the, on the rational functions, most, most of those that we did were horizontal asymptote on both sides, but here on the uh, Exponentials, you've got a horizontal asymptote on one side. In this case, it's on the left. That can flip around, I'll show you in just a second. But 
Yeah, so this is this is the basic graph of an exponential function. I've heard uh, heard it explained called a hockey stick, uh, maybe type graph because the uh, shape there kind of has the shape of a hockey stick. But um, that's what exponentials or these basic ones anyway they look like. Would it be accurate to say that the uh, horizontal asymptote infinitely gets closer to that axis? But the x-axis, yes, in this case. Um, <clears throat> now, the other thing I was going to mention here, we haven't talked about uh, increasing and decreasing functions, but this is a good time to talk about that. An increasing function is one, as you go left to right, that goes up from left to right. You're up headed upward and so if you look at uh, maybe it's not so obvious here but obviously as uh, as we go left to right on the graph that graph is uh, going up and so that this is an example this is a function an increasing function is just what we uh, what we would say there. So the function is increasing. And that's another kind of designation because uh, we'll look at another version of an exponential function here in a second and it'll be kind of the opposite and so that's another distinction we can make. This is the increasing version of the exponential function. Alright? Um, now just a little more clarification on the increase. Why, why, why do we say that's increasing? It's because of the function value. As you go left to right, if we jump from uh, x value 1 to x value 2 to x value 3, the function values are increasing there. Because you go from 2, oops, uh, 2 to 4 to 8, uh, so the function values are increasing is what, uh, what we mean by that. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's contrast that to this one. f of x equals 2 to the minus x. <clears throat> and what we'll see there if we just look at the table, is a similar uh, similar things happen just at different x values, right? Because what's the uh, what's the y value when x is negative two? Sort of positive. That's going to make the uh, exponent positive, right? Mm -hmm. oh. And so that would be uh, two to the second. So that's going to that's going to be where the four is. It's at negative two. And then when x is negative 1, we'll have 2 to the negative negative 1, so that would be 2 to the 1, which makes that 2. And so yeah, it just flips things around, doesn't it? <clears throat> x is 0, we've still got 2 to the 0, so that's still 1. When x is 1, that's where we have 2 to the negative 1, right? So that's the half. And then 2 to the negative 2, uh, x is 2, then y is 2 to the negative 2, so that's our uh, 1 fourth. So yeah, things have just flip-flopped, if you will. <clears throat> so now at negative 2, that's where I'm at 4. Negative 1, I'm at 2. 0, I'm still at 1. Uh, 1, I'm at a half. And 2, I'm at a fourth. So yeah, things have just said flip-flop. Um, if we want to be technical about it, it's been reflected how? Through the y-axis. The, the y-axis, yes. But anyway, it turns turns it into this shape, which is still a hockey stick, but what's different about it? Well, uh, for one thing, the horizontal asymptote's on the right, isn't it? <clears throat> we do have the horizontal asymptote at... Uh, y equals zero, but it's on the right instead of the left. Um, and the other thing that's changed, and that 
again, the distinction here, instead of increasing, what do we have here? Decreasing. It's decreasing, yeah, from left to right, the, uh, the graph is decreasing. So our function is said to be decreasing. And again, that's because the function value is decreasing. If I go from <coughs> negative two to negative one, the function value decreases because I go from four to, down to two, so it's the function value that's decreasing there. Um, all right. So, yeah, so the basic shape of an exponential function, a hockey stick, um, sometimes you'll see, uh, see these two <coughs> listed this way. Um, in general, we call the base, uh, base A. Now the only thing, so that one would look like 2 to the x, as long as we have, uh, so let's look at the, whoops, the other way. The only real uh, uh, note there that we need on that is the base, the A here, can be any number, um, but for it to be this shape, a has to be greater than one. So any number bigger than one, plug that in, make it to the x power. That's the shape they're going to have. This hockey stick shape. <coughs> the increasing graph, um, horizontal asymptote over here on the left, and then. <coughs> If you've got f of x equals a to the minus x power, then that's the decreasing variety there. <coughs> so long as a is greater than 1. <coughs> just, just gives you an idea of what, uh, what those should look like if you come across those and think about the graph. All right, now, <clears throat> what uh, what they'll do with these, or what we'll have you, as far as drafting concerned, do with these is, uh, or some shifting. But good news is the shifting is the same as as before. Uh, what kind of shift is that going to put on this graph? Shift the plus right. two. No. The plus two on the outside, right? <clears throat> and remember, on the outside, if you go uh, plus or minus on the outside, that shifts it up or down. And the plus goes like you would think; it goes up. So this is going to shift. It's the three to the minus x graph shifted two units up. So this shifts the two units up. Um, now it's a minus power, and so the graph we're uh, expecting is this. So it's the, the decreasing hockey stick, if you will. Um, <clears throat> but it's shifted two units up. Now, in particular, what uh, that affects, if I shift this graph two units up, what also goes up with it? The asymptote. The asymptote, yeah. The horizontal asymptote is going to be raised. And so that, uh, that's kind of the significance of shifting it two, two units up. So the uh, horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 2. <laughs> that. Um, I would still, you know, still get a couple of values here. <clears throat> just to get the, the shape accurate here. Uh, if x is negative 2, we'd have 3 to the positive 2 plus 2, so that's going to be 11, 9 plus 2. If x is negative 1, that'll be 3 to the negative negative 1, so that'll be 3 to the positive 1 plus 2, so that's 5. 3 to the 0 uh, plus 2, that's still uh, 1 plus 2, so that'd be 3. 3 to the negative 1 plus 2, uh, that's a third, so this is 2 and a third, or 2.33 if you wanted to write as a decimal. 
and then x is negative 2, well, that'd be a ninth, so a ninth plus 2, so that's 2 and a ninth, or 2.1111, I believe is the decimal for that. So that just gives you a few points to, uh, like I said, get this accurate, uh, pretty, pretty accurate. So at negative 2, we're at 11. Negative 1, I'm at 5. Where's 5? Here's 5. 0, I'm at 3. 2 and a third. 2 and a ninth. So it's getting real close to 2 right there. But. So yeah, we've got the shape we were expecting. The horizontal asymptote is now at uh, 2 there, so it's going to level off. You're not going to go below, below that line. Is that okay? Question or concern? <clears throat> One more. All right, so four, f of x equals 4 to the x plus 3. All right, so the plus 3 is up there in the exponent, and so that, uh, technically speaking, that's kind of on the inside, what we uh, were terming on the inside when we were talking about the shifts. And inside, uh, adding or subtracting a number, what does that do? Left right. Makes it go left or right. So that's a horizontal shift, and plus 3, right or left. That would be go, going to the left, yeah. It kind of goes opposite of what you might think there. Yeah, so this is going to shift it uh, three units left. So yeah, if you've got a um, plus or a minus on the uh, exponent there, that's going to make it go right or left, and plus goes to the left, the minus three would go to the right. But. Now, <clears throat> this one, we've got four, and it's just x plus three. 4 to the x plus 3, and so which hockey stick are we talking there? Increasing. The increasing one, like that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now it's going to shift at 3 units to the left. So if I put my uh, same values here I've been doing, <clears throat> Four to the negative two plus three. Uh, that's just four to the one, isn't it? and then four to the negative one plus three is four squared, sixteen. Four to the zero plus three, that's sixty-four. Four to the third, and then we're getting some large into some large numbers here. Four to the fourth. It's four to the fourth. Two fifty-six. And then four to the fifth. That's 1,024, I believe, isn't it? Somebody check me on those, but <laughs> yeah. So these, because of the shift to the left, these numbers on the right are getting quite large, um, and because we're on the increasing. But uh, <clears throat> so negative two, I'm at four. At negative one, I'm all the way already to 16. And then at uh, zero, I'm at 64. I'm not even going to put that on here. <clears throat> um, but yeah, because we're up, we're talking about the uh, increasing hockey stick exponential function shape, that's shifted three units to the left. And so yeah, these values over here are going to be quite large quite fast. Um, <clears throat> the rest of it, so if we've got three units to the left, we might want to probably pick out maybe some more negative numbers instead of uh, our regular ones here. Go with a negative 3, negative 4 instead. And that, on this scale anyway, would uh, probably be more to our advantage. Yeah, because if you do x is negative 3, that gives you the 4 to the 0, right? <clears throat> which is 1, and then for the negative 4, that gives you the uh, 4 to the negative 1, which is 1 fourth. 
so. That's so yours. Here it is. Now, we shifted three units to the left. What did that do to the horizontal asymptote? Well, it also shifted it three units to the left, but did that really change it? If I shift my horizontal asymptote to the left, it's still, left. It's still at zero, isn't it? Yeah, so a right or left shift is not going to change um, the horizontal asymptote because it's still four units to the left, or three units to the left, it's still zero. You didn't raise it up or down, so. Might note there, it's still at zero. <clears throat> okay. Any uh, thoughts or concerns on on that? <clears throat> so a couple of those. Have you graph graph a couple of those? <clears throat> <clears throat> 